Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. This one is lesson three, uh, named polysaccharides. This is the last one that we're gonna be talking about uh, carbohydrates in. Uh, after that, we're gonna move into lipids, proteins, and vitamins and minerals. But uh, polysaccharides is something that's very, very interesting and expansive. It affects a lot of different parts of our life. Um, we eat lots of different forms of them. Uh, let's jump in. It is another type of sugar. So, uh, polysaccharides are the most abundant carbohydrate found in food. So, polysaccharides means lots of uh, sugars. So, they are in long, long chains. Uh, we call them polymeric chains. Uh, and they're composed of a whole bunch of monosaccharides. Often, a particular monosaccharide, glucose. Glucose is the most common one through all of these polysaccharides. It's often just the way that they're arranged that makes it different. So polysaccharides are often quite heterogeneous. Uh, that means that they are not the same all the way through. They're containing slight modifications of the repeating units uh, bound together by glycosidic linkages. So if disaccharides were bound together by glycosidic linkages, so are polysaccharides, just a whole bunch repeating over and over again. Polysaccharides essentially refers to anything over three um, sugars in length, and they can be thousands and thousands long. Uh, we have to store them in our liver, we store them in different parts of our body to use uh, as energy for cells. Um, but polysaccharides are the most abundant that we eat and also the most abundant that we store. So uh, carbohydrates that contain many monosaccharides are polysaccharides. And one example is starch. So starch is just a bunch of glucose molecules lined up together, except this format of them is found in plants. Um, it's used for energy. So when we uh, use, or when we eat potatoes, um, that is a starch. They are completely carbohydrates. If you're staying away from carbohydrates, then uh, starch or potatoes is not a good thing for you to be eating. Uh, there are lots of other plants as well that have starch, uh, as well as another type of um, polysaccharide cellulose, which is key point four above me. Glycogen is the second type of polysaccharide. Again, it is a bunch of glucose molecules just configured in a different way. Uh, and glycogen is how we store energy in the liver. So it is stored in the liver as an energy reserve. It is in very, very long branches. So it looks kind of like a tree, as you can see on the diagram in your notes and on the screen. Uh, it kind of branches off over and over again, filling up all the space it can with glucose molecules. Because that is stored within our liver, we are able to then take that and use it throughout our body by transporting it with our bloodstream. And we'll talk about blood and the circulatory system later on in the course. So we store it there so that it is able to be used quickly in case of an emergency. The last type of polysaccharide that we're gonna talk about, and again, you should be pausing and writing these things down as we go, somewhere near the diagrams uh, that you have in your notes already. Cellulose is found in plants. Uh, we lack the enzyme to break them down. So if you have ever heard the expression um, that you, know, you, you don't buy corn, you just borrow it, uh, it's because we really can't break it down. We don't have the enzymes that are required to break it down. We don't have cellulase. Cellulase would be the uh, enzyme that would break down cellulose. Um, what it is, cellulose, is kind of fiber. It is moisture for our stools. It keeps us regularly, uh, sorry, it keeps us regular and it significantly reduces uh, the chances of colon cancer. Again, you'll see that it's just a bunch of glucose molecules, but arranged differently. So the key between starch glycogen and cellulose, and I might write this down, is that the glucose molecules are all arranged in a different way, and that gives them different properties. Uh, it's very common for different um, molecules to have different properties based on the arrangement of their atoms. So polysaccharides. Nutrition polysaccharides are a common source of energy. Uh, many organisms can easily break down starches into glucose, However, most organisms cannot metabolize cellulose or other polysaccharides. They just don't have the proper enzymes, and we're one of those. 
um, different animals. So what are some good versus not so good sources of starches and carbohydrates? Uh, we've got some cookies. It might be okay depending on their type if they're just like oatmeal cookies, but if they've got sugar in them, that would be a not good source. Uh, Quaker oats, that is a very good source, except if you have added sugar to it, like maple and brown sugar, see, that sugar added. If you have just Quaker oatmeal, that would be great. That would be a good source. Uh, this fancy cake, probably not the best source. It would be high in uh, glucose and fast carbohydrates, what we call them. Uh, and this grain would definitely be a good source as it, it would be full of polysaccharides and take a long time to break down. What I'd like you guys to do now is to complete the questions below about polysaccharides. Some of the answers I've given you in this lecture and some of them you'll need to do some research for. So uh, some key questions in there. What is the same and what is different about all of these polysaccharides, starch, glycogen, and cell cellulose. What is their properties and how are, how are they different and how are they the same? Uh, that is all we have for the carbohydrate section. We're gonna move on to lipids, proteins, and vitamins and minerals in the second half of the nutrients um, unit. But thanks everyone for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Don't be afraid to go back and watch this video again. Uh, watch particular slides again while you write them down. Uh, and please let me know if you need anything. Thanks again, everyone.